Good morning, Tennessee Valley. How are you this morning? My name is Matt Talbert. I will be your host this morning. Matt Ryerson is off today, and uh, so he has uh, handed over the reins to me, which I'm really excited about. Which means we can do anything. And here's my lovely, talented, witty, beautiful co-host, oh, Sarah Anderson. Sarah, welcome. Thanks. It's good to be here. I'm glad to have you here. You will probably recognize her as our uh, entertainment uh, expert, mm -hmm. as well as she works for a local agency here, CASA. Mm -hmm. And uh, and she has uh, willingly agreed to uh, to deal with the abuse of being on this show with me, and uh, and have a, a well, hopefully we'll have some fun, and hopefully it'll be entertaining for you. Uh, at home. So, hey, tell me, what was your weekend? Did you have a good weekend? Is it... I, I did have a good weekend. Um, it was restful, and then Sunday I went home. I'm from Maryville, up by Knoxville. Ah. So, I, yeah, good, beautiful place up there yes, with the mountains. The mountains and mm -hmm. everything. Um, and I was able to go home yesterday and go see the Lady Vols play basketball. How'd they the do? Summit. They won. They beat Vanderbilt by really? about 21 points. Which well, then is it good. was worth it. It was very worth it. And I got a free ticket. My mom bought them. So Any yeah. chance to beat another SEC team? Yes, all like about Vanderbilt. it. That's fantastic. I had a pretty in, uh, a fun weekend as well. Um, I have a dog. Okay. Her name is Ray. She is um, a mutt, basically. Aww. Um, she's, uh, she's kind of a combo. She's, I think she's a lab mixed with uh, chow. Okay. Did you get her to shelter or how did you? Um, no, I found her on oh, the side of the road. Awesome. She was in a ditch. And she was a tiny, tiny little dog, but Aww. she's, you know, 60 pounds now. But anyway, uh, so what we did was is we decided to, uh, to put a fence up in order to keep her in the backyard. And it's one of the, the ugliest and most horrible fences you've seen, <laughs> primarily because I put it up. And it's like all crooked and mm -hmm. it doesn't, it, it's just terrible. Anyway, she is an escape artist. Okay, how she so? Can, she can get out of this fence. No matter what I do, she gets out of this fence. Ugh. She digs underneath. She squeezes through little, uh, little where it's going up against, butting up against other fences, up against the wall. At one point, we have a little retaining wall, and, the, and I don't put a fence there. She climbed the retaining wall. She jumps up and pulls herself up. Retaining wall. That's impressive. This is ridiculous. <laughs> I'm really, I'm like putting like cement block at the base so she can't get out. So this, I, I felt like the, she's been back there for a long time. She hasn't gotten out for mm -hmm. a little while. This so you felt time. safe. You felt like it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I felt like things you were, were good. good. Yeah. This last uh, week she got out again, and I couldn't figure out why. And uh, and then I realized, and I saw the gate latch was lifted up. She had actually gone in, she, lifted up the gate latch, and, and closed pushed it the back. gate. Well, it swung back. That's impressive. And, but the, gate, the, the latch didn't fall, and it swung back. So she was actually getting out through the gate. Oof. So you don't lock it? Well, I mean, why do I need to lock it? It's a dog. Well, we had, growing up, we had a similar problem. We had American Water Spaniels, and Brooke would always tunnel under. American but we, Water mm -hmm, Spaniels? What is they're that? They're gorgeous. It's a Spaniel. Are they like Spaniels is, with fins or something? What is a yes, Water Yes, they, they have webbed toes. Oh, okay. Well, they actually do. Are you serious? <laughs> no, I don't oh, think right. so. They might be. They're made, they're bred for water, though. They're like, um, like fowl hunting dogs. So they oh, can okay. jump so in and go a, retrieve. You shoot a duck shoot a, and then, yeah, it and then goes they go out get them. All yeah. right, all right, cool. Much like golden retrievers or mm -hmm, other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, they're gorgeous. Short, cropped, like curly hair. Beautiful. But yeah, much. they look a lot like, um, I want to say Irish setters. Is that the one I'm looking are they, for? But they're not big. But they're, but Irish setters they're, are they're tall. smaller and really slender and trim. Oh. And they have tails that will like beat you to death. They're like rope just hitting you. But anyway. Right. Brooke used to always do the same thing, but we locked the latch. So because that it kinda, because, mm, she, because could she could, get could it. flick, yeah, with her nose. See, I, I just did not think dogs, I know that dogs are smart. They're man's best friend, but I did not <laughs> realize true. they could do something like that. Apparently, some of them can, so. It's, it's, it's kind of, uh, kind of ridiculous. It's mind blowing. Mind, mind, mind blowing. Mind blowing. Mm -hmm. Mind blowing. Um, yeah, well, well, this weekend was a pretty huge weekend. In the sports world, oh, the uh, NFL playoffs were this past weekend, and our favorite favorite player, Tim Tebow, okay. lost tragic horribly lost. It was like forty-five to ten. It was a terrible, Very terrible painful, loss. Yeah. 
And there's some debate. And, and now, do you follow sports at all? Um, not football very much. No. I used to. I Lady balls, I guess. A yeah. little, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, there's now this huge debate over whether or not Tim Tebow will actually be you know, playing and quarterback for the team next year and all this other stuff. But I think what we should do is we should create a petition, an online petition. Okay. And we email it out to everybody, and everybody signs their name that's saying, yes, we want Tim Tebow next year. And I don't want him because he's a good quarterback, because really he's not. What I want is I just want somebody who's different than Tom Brady, who's the, the main guy. That's true. I was going to say, do you want, is it because he prays or because no, any no, of that? No, 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 because he, because, well, I mean, I, I appreciate that yeah. he prays, uh, of course. But, uh, but no, I want him because he is not your typical quarterback. Mm -hmm. That's true. He doesn't have that same air about him. Is that what you're saying? That well, cocky, not obnoxious just, thing? No, or? no it, it's the fact that he can't throw the ball okay. that I like. <laughs> I like that he can't throw. I like that he can't you throw like the ball. That he lacks I like skill that he, in that, areas. that he lacks skill. Yeah, that's what it is. Well, I mean, he doesn't lack skill. Let me clarify. Well, he, he lacks the skills normally yeah, associated with being different. a quarterback. And uh, yeah, so I, I really um, I want to see him do well um, because he um, shouldn't be able to do well. That's true. well, and I think there were predictions he wouldn't do well in professional at all, from what I remember hearing, because yeah. he was he did lack those same yeah. normal attributes yeah. that, especially in pro level football, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, actually, and recently, I feel like there's been a lot of backlash. I'm sure you and Matt have discussed this, hmm. but just people bashing him because of yes. the. And here's my thing. I don't. I think it's cool that he that he practices his faith and that he's fine with showing that. And I don't understand people having such an issue mm -hmm. with him and the mm -hmm. hatred and the negativity towards him. I get if you don't necessarily agree with his beliefs, that's completely, that's a different topic. Mm -hmm. But for people that just, all the hatred and the animosity towards the guy, I'm like, he plays football, leave him alone. Just let him do his thing. I agree. I totally. mean, I don't think he's been overly obnoxious about it. I think he's made it very clear what he believes and um, he obviously displays that and has continued to, which is great that he's making it. No more so than any other uh, player, any other yeah. believing player. I, I, everybody says, thank God, thank Jesus for, yeah. for the opportunity, for the blessings he's given. I mean, everybody says that mm -hmm. in press conferences and everything. Why him? Why are you picking on him? Mm -hmm. And I think it's because um, he's terrible. And they don't want to see somebody succeed just because they are a good guy. Okay, or just because yeah. they're a Christian. But... Even still, I think that's a pretty stupid reason to. Kind no, of I agree. Somebody. People just wanting to pull him down, but totally, it's okay. We so, like you, so, <laughs> Tim Tebow. <laughs> if you're out there, we know yeah, you're out there. Tim. We know you're watching because we're really big in Denver. It's, yeah, I can we imagine. So. Yeah, there's like like 35 people who watch us out in Denver. We <laughs> want to let you let you know that we are supporters of you, Tim Tebow. It's true. Supporters of Tim Tebow, thank you. Because this of your is, lack uh, of skill. This has been a fantastic <laughs> first segment of this show. This has just been great. I am so start. glad Ryerson's not here. Me too. Because this has been so much better. I than almost when brought. He, I should have brought like party hats and a little. A totally. I, right? I forgot. I wasn't thinking. I, I personally think the level of quality has risen mm -hmm. just by From him not being here. It's true. His lack of presence exactly. has improved. Has the improved show. the show. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Matt. I'm not sorry. <laughs> Matt, I, if you're out there, I and it. I know you are, I'm really liking her. I'm thinking <laughs> we're going to do all right. So you now you have a, uh, you, you, you're you big in the entertainment world. Yes, I'm huge in the entertainment world. <laughs> right, yeah, you have all these, because we're going to hear about that in the next yes, segment. We right? are. After the commercial break, we're going to get some of that going on. But part of, then this is kind of politics and entertainment. Mm. Stephen Colbert. Yes. Did you hear about what he's doing? A little bit. I heard a snippet about it. He That's is Steven. running for president. That's absurd, and I love it. He is running for president, but only in the state of South Carolina. He is a native. He was born in South Carolina. So he's only running in South Carolina. You never know now, what he's going to do next. <laughs> he's, he's, uh, he kind of looks like Mitt Romney, if you think about he it. He has he's a bit of hair. that. Yeah, it's tr that very yeah, that hair-like hair. Greasy. Do you know anything about that? Uh, no. That Hair presents? Uh, okay. Take a look. What do you think? <laughs> I actually was told this last weekend that I'm trying to be a Viking because of the whole facial hair It thing. works. I mean, it, you have like the, the proper skin and eye coloring. and. I think I think that I could be. I'll I could bring you a helmet. For, I could pass for Nordic. You could, definitely. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Thor. You, Thor. If we're talking about baby names, huh? <laughs> Why not pass Thor. that on? Thor, that's a great that, name. 
Put it on the list. The, the Your wife Thor would Tolbert. It. Thor Tolbert. Thor. Mm -hmm. You heard it here, folks. Thor. It's no, coming. Stephen Colbert. He, they, they have this new thing where um, organ, uh, uh, organizations, companies, businesses can actually fund um, for, and, and spend money on politicians. And they okay. can actually make these uh, attack ads and things like that. Or maybe not attack ads. Hopefully not. Nice but... ads. And there's been a big hullabaloo going between Newt Gingrich and Mitt Romney. And they're, they're these attack ads, right? Yeah. Well, Stephen Colbert created an attack ad. Because the Supreme Court this year, or this past year, they, they ruled that, it's, that organizations are people too. That they, they are ruled as people and protected under the First Amendment. Okay, that's and interesting. And because Mitt Romney has um, spent his career in business buying and then dismantling and destroying companies like that in order okay. to make a profit, Stephen Colbert came out with an ad. Well, not him. His super PAC oh, yes. came he out with an it. ad that says that Mitt Romney is a serial killer. Because he is murdering these Because he's murdering these, these organizations. corporations. <laughs> That's fantastic. I'd support it. <laughs> On that note, let's take a look at the weather. Uh, the weather uh, this morning is uh, it's going to be a little warmer, I think, today. Uh, yeah, right there today uh, it's going to be rainy, and uh, it was a little wet this morning already. High of 61, uh, low of, of 31, and then tomorrow, which is kind of strange, it's going to drop to 43. So we have like 61, and then down to 43 degrees, which is really strange. With a low, look at the low right there. That oof, harsh. That's fantastic. <laughs> it's winter, apparently, That's finally. That's fantastic. And then Thursday, again, mostly sunny and 43 with a low of 23. Really excited about that. Do you like the cold weather? I love the cold Me weather. Me too. Well, I feel like it is January. Why is it not cold? I agree. I am confused. Totally agree. It makes me uncomfortable and nervous. I, <laughs> and nervous, <laughs> yes, even. I start sweating. It's too warm. I, I blame El Nino. I would. I think that's, that's always a or greenhouse see, effect. Or see, some, if we were living in Canada right now, we would be uh, really, really nervous because this warm weather just would not make it in Canada. It's absurd, yeah. However, Jennifer James, who does, uh, is from Canada, mm -hmm. uh, she was cold this morning. And she it really was cold. I saw cold. her putting her gloves on. She yeah. put her gloves on. Mm -hmm. What is that? All right. So um, we have just annoyed you enough that uh, we're going to take a break right now. We'll come back with an entertainment expert, Sarah Anderson, with some new news. The Golden Globes were this weekend. They were. So we'll, we'll be right back after this. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland, is your number one Dodge Chrysler and Jeep dealer in this area. Stop by and see the brand new 2011 Chrysler 200. The 200 is essentially a new nameplate with a significant facelift to the outgoing 2010 Chrysler Sebring, a beautiful vehicle at an unbeatable price. And while you're there, check out the all new Jeep Grand Cherokee and the newly designed Dodge Durango, redesigned, revamped, and reinvigorated. Yes, the Dodge Dodge Durango is back, bigger and better than ever. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep offers a complete parts and service department with qualified service technicians to fix and repair your vehicle. So for your next brand new or pre-owned vehicle, make it Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland. How would you like to look and feel better? If so, then visit the Ford Center for Anti-Aging, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Dr. Ford has been serving Cleveland and the surrounding area since 1984. He is a licensed physician with the Board of Anti-Aging Medicine, offering affordable Botox injections. Botox is a medication that is used to treat dynamic wrinkles such as crow's feet, forehead lines, and frown lines. In addition to Botox therapy, rejuvenate and smooth wrinkled skin the micro laser peel treats skin conditions associated with aging and active lifestyles. If you're looking for safe and affordable anti-aging treatment, call the Ford Center for Anti-Aging at 423-614-0535, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. I'm Dr. James Markham, host of the television program, Heart of Health, seen right here on WTNB television. Thursday at 7 o'clock, Friday at 8 a.m., or Sunday at 3.30 p.m.
I'm Wes Robbins with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. When it comes to employee benefits, we've got you covered. Call me today for the best service and best solutions to your group health and employee benefits needs. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. Welcome back. Welcome back, Tennessee, this morning. Um, what we have a fantastic report coming to you from our own entertainment expert, Sarah Anderson, about uh, the recent news in entertainment. So, Sarah, what do you have for us? No pressure or anything. Fantastic. It's got to be fantastic. Fantastic. Um, well, the, the biggest thing right now is, as Matt mentioned before the break, last night was the Golden Globes. So we have, it is award season officially. It already has been, by the way, if you missed it, but people's choice and whatnot. Um, <laughs> so last night were the Globes. And we have some things that weren't surprising, like Meryl Streep winning Best Performance by an Actress in a Motion Picture Drama for Iron Lady, playing good old Margaret Thatcher. Can't wait to see that. Um, also, George Clooney got Best Performance by an Actor in a Motion Picture Drama for the descendants. Now, George Clooney, he's that uh, really attractive man, isn't he's he? He's very attractive. Yes. yes. Uh, you can say that. He, for some reason, he tends to win everything. He's like winning a lot. Well, he here won, recently. what was it, World's Sexiest Man several years in a row or My something? My goodness, I know. this man. He doesn't stop. Well, I think he's made, not that he ever really went away. But he has made more of a comeback, I think, the last couple of years with movies like sure. The Descendants. He's surprising people and doing more than. Sure. Now, you know, have you seen The Descendants? He's come a long way from the ER. No, I actually have like, not. And it's I need about to. a guy it's, whose wife. Mm -hmm, leaves his wife him or dies, oh, and dies. so he's having to reconnect with his two daughters. Oh. So. Yeah, I need to catch it though because it was it was all over. That's, that's going to make you cry, isn't it? Probably. Yeah. 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 Um, but it has good hopes for future award ceremonies. Because of course, February 26th, we have the Academy Awards. So. Of course. So we're looking forward to those. And I'll be, we'll, do, we'll do beforehand. A special segment mm -hmm. on that, okay, cool. I would say so. Um, and then <laughs> continuing on, one of my favorite and unsus unexpected awards, Best Performance by an Actress in a Motion Picture, Comedy or Musical, Michelle Williams for My Week with Marilyn. Have you seen that, Matt? I have not seen that. You should. Um, That's the Marilyn Monroe thing? The, yes, and it was wonderful. And it's, they're considering it, apparently they, they've labeled it a comedy. Which a comedy? I don't really know if Marilyn's life was a comedy, but maybe that little snippet of it. Um, it I mean, it had a lot of humorous moments because she was very See, I bubbly. I never thought of <clears throat> Marilyn Monroe as a comedic actress. Yeah, not really. Uh, more as um, a blonde, uh, not very smart actress. I That's don't know. What she, yeah, that was how she was portrayed, certainly. But it's, I mean, it's a very good... It's and her life movie. is not really comedic. It's more tragic, don't mm -hmm. you think? Yeah. So I think they're just saying that that particular moment in time of it was humorous, which is strange. Yeah, I was very surprised by that. But I was very happy for Michelle Williams. She deserves it. Really? And, yeah. Oh, she used to be on uh, Dawson's, Dawson's Creek. Creek. Yeah, that was her oh, big start. Oh, yes, Dawson's Creek. She was the angsty Creek. teen. Yeah. She, angsty teen. Angsty That's teen. what she played. That mm -hmm. was her, her description was angsty teen. Angsty. She's, she was married to Heath Ledger, right? Yeah, she was, which was also tragic in and of itself. Yeah, so yeah. Well, that's just, fantastic. Mm -hmm. She actually won something. Yeah, very good for her. Um, also, probably my favorite award of the night, Best Performance by an Actress in a Supporting Role in a Motion Picture, Octavia Spencer for The Help. The Help. Now, mm -hmm. I actually, um, this, this uh, semester uh, in Cleveland State, we do a book club, and we're, and we're reading Sweet. The Help. Oh. And so I just joined that club, that book uh, club, and I'm going to read that uh, that book this week or this this semester. But I, I haven't seen the movie yet, but I've heard it's really really good. It is really good. I've seen the movie. I haven't read the book, which normal that's reverse of what I normally like to do. So yeah. I'm going to go back and read the book. It's in my in my stack of books to read. Um, but the the movie is very good, and I think it's I mean it's suitable. It really is kind of like an all ages sort of film. Really? Not that, I mean, younger sects might not entirely get it, but it's a very good film. And all this, all the ensemble cast in it was fabulous. Just really so. good acting. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. You know, yeah. I actually turned it to the Golden Globes for just a second and I saw Colin Firth get up there. Yes, which didn't, it, didn't now, it now Ricky I am, kill him I, before I just he... want to let all of you know, I'm a married man, um, beautiful wife, uh, but I love Colin Firth. He's fantastic. I think he's he's an attractive man. Mm -hmm. I know that I'm not supposed to say that 
as, as a man. No, but you're I'm allowed good. to say that. You can say a man is attractive, and he's delightfully witty, too. He just seems kind of... He's great. Yes, he's fantastic. He is wonderful. We love you, Colin. But, of course, he didn't win anything last time. No. So why are we even talking about I him? don't know, because of your man crush on him. It's okay. <laughs> I do. I have a man crush on it's him. It's okay to admit it. There's All nothing right. wrong with it. It's okay, not harmful. fine. fine. <laughs> what else you got? Well, um, there were some other... Oh, I did... I don't think I mentioned best motion picture drama was The Descendants as well. Oh, really? And George Clooney won for The Descendants. Now, this so that is, is one to of, watch. This is one of these of, that, that, now, the Golden Globes, this, is, it, is it common that they win the Academy Award? Is it's it? actually, the way that they judge is kind of different. Um, actually, my friend Lindsay filled me in on this last night. That Lindsay from, Lohan, is that what you're Yeah, we're about? tied. <laughs> Lilo and I are besties. <laughs> Um, no, she, she stalks the awards, basically. It's like her thing. And she was informing me that the Academy Awards generally go for the darker, more dreary. So a lot of times movies uh. that don't get great reviews or don't have a whole lot of box office you know, quality to them. So if you want well, to, when. if you want to enjoy a movie, re watch the ones that Golden the, Globes yeah, like. Yeah, more likely. If you mm -hmm. want to cry, want to cry or be depressed, yeah, or be watch very, something very angry, from the Oscars. Yeah, then watch something from the Oscars. Mm -hmm. You see, that is not something that I know. Yeah, I didn't either. See, this is things why you you're the entertainment expert because you come up with these things and mm -hmm. you just you really enlighten our world. Thank you. I try. Yeah, I'm talking her up way. <laughs> yeah, okay. I need it right now. It's good. Now, you said there was some news about um, the Kardashians. Oh, always, yeah. They're, they're always doing something foolish. And as, as a lot of you know... Um, he uh, loves Kim I, Kardashian. <laughs> I, I think Kim Kardashian is beautiful, but I hate her. She's disgusting. And it's that 72-day marriage thing that I, I really didn't like. But go ahead. What, what, what do we got here? Yeah, well, basically, apparently, Kim called Chloe, And as you know, Chloe is the tall sister. That's how I like to describe her. She's just... A head taller than all of them. Anyway, um, she referred to her sister as an ugly, evil little troll. What? Who does that? Really? So that just kind of, and they apparently spent the whole last episode of their whatever stupid show they have going right now. I think Take on New York or something dumb. Um, spent the whole last episode hating each other. You know, I so. tell you, the, why do we watch them? I don't know. I avoid it. I why just are the they popular? Out. I don't. America. The state of America. They are, they are now, and I've seen... The taller one mm -hmm. is not little. No, she's not. And the she's tiny called little ugly petite. little. Troll. Yeah, little evil troll. Yeah. Little evil troll. Mm -hmm. I would think that a troll looks more like somebody like I don't know Matt Ryerson or something like that. Something like that. You know, he's taller mm -hmm. and kind of got that red beard thing going on. Probably. And the and the you know the glasses. <laughs> He wears a lot of sweaters. Maybe more a leprechaun would be with the, <laughs> that, Just the a red giant red. leprechaun. Mm -hmm. A large... Matt Ryerson is a giant leprechaun. He's a leprechaun. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, anyway, you know... But he's a lovable leprechaun. Okay, lovable. All right, we'll give you that, Matt. You, you're lovable. Lovable. We're lovable. Um, he's going he's gonna to really get mad at me yeah, for, I think for all so. this stuff, isn't he? And I'm going along with it. So. <laughs> yeah, so he's going to be mad at you, too. Probably. That's okay. That's okay. He's not here, so he doesn't know. Well, anything else? Is that is that no, pretty much it? We got now. more yeah. entertainment coming up uh, next week, mm -hmm. though. So uh, every week there's something going on in the thank world. Thank you so very much, Sarah. You're I welcome. appreciate it. Uh, we have a very special guest coming up after the break. Uh, Dr. Neil Greenwood from Cleveland State's going to be here. Um, so stick around. We'll be right back. <laughs> Kathy Guy with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. Call us today for all your personal insurance needs. With 28 years in the insurance business, I have the solutions and pricing you are looking for. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland, is your number one Dodge Chrysler and Jeep dealer in this area. Stop by and see the brand new 2011 Chrysler 200. The 200 is essentially a new nameplate with a significant facelift to the outgoing 2010 Chrysler Sebring. A beautiful vehicle at an unbeatable price. And while you're there, check out the all-new Jeep Grand Cherokee and the newly designed Dodge Durango. Redesigned, revamped, and reinvigorated. Yes, the Dodge Dodge Durango is back, bigger and better than ever. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep offers a complete parts and service department with qualified service technicians to fix and repair your vehicle. So for your next brand new or pre-owned vehicle, make it Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland. 
I'm Dr. James Markham, host of the television program Heart of Health, seen right here on WTNB Television. Thursday at 7 o'clock, Friday at 8 a.m., or Sunday at 3.30 p.m. How would you like to look and feel better? If so, then visit the Ford Center for Anti-Aging, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Dr. Ford has been serving Cleveland and the surrounding area since 1984. He is a licensed physician with the Board of Anti-Aging Medicine, offering affordable Botox injections. Botox is a medication that is used to treat dynamic wrinkles such as crow's feet, forehead lines, and frown lines. In addition to Botox therapy, rejuvenate and smooth wrinkled skin. The micro laser peel treats skin conditions associated with aging and active lifestyles. If you're looking for safe and affordable anti-aging treatment, call the Ford Center for Anti-Aging at 423-614-0535, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Welcome back, uh, Tennessee Valley. We, uh, we're very happy to have with us this morning Dr. Neil Greenwood, history professor at Cleveland State Community College here, um, who's going to talk to us a little bit about Martin Luther King Jr. As you all know, um, MLK Day was this week, and, uh, and we're really happy to know. I want to know a little bit more about MLK. I mean, we've heard a lot, and you know, I've heard his speech, you know, the, the freedom speech and, uh, and everything else, but... Uh, but you're coming on to tell us a little bit more about who he was and what this kind of means uh, for us. So what do you got? Well, MLK uh, was a Baptist minister, and he was the son of a Baptist minister, and he'd been born in Atlanta. And he'd been born in a community within Atlanta, which was separated by race from the uh, white community within Atlanta. And that was typical of many American cities, north and south, east and west, before World War II and even uh, well into the second half of the 20th century. And um, he was educated at Morehouse College, Boston University, he got his doctorate in theology. And um, he also became a student of Mahatma Gandhi, particularly Mahatma Gandhi's nonviolent tactics for change. Um, and Gandhi, of course, was able to lead the struggle for Indian independence, insisting upon even to the endangerment of his own health, nonviolence. And Mahatma Gandhi, or Martin Luther King Jr. Um, embraced this strategy in his own uh, participation in the struggle for civil rights. Um, he started in 1955, December 1955, when Rosa Parks had refused to give up her seat in Montgomery in the bus. And uh, he had become a leader through his skills, his oratorical skills, uh, and also his uh, leadership skills uh, in this movement. And it had, uh, it bore a fruit uh, in December of 1956. Um, buses were, public transportation was declared uh, to no longer be uh, valid for segregation. Supreme Court so, stepped in. So, now I, this is something that, that I didn't know, that, that he was a student of Gandhi. Yeah. Of Gandhi. That, I that I think is, and, and how significant is that for Martin Luther King Jr.? I mean, because at the same, around the same time, you had um, a lot of people using violence in order to kind of, but he, but Martin Luther King Jr. decided not to do that. Yep, it was not in his nature. He was opposed to the use of violence, and he um, he was very uh, intelligent as far as recognizing that in our society, if he could focus the attention upon the people who were being violent who were violently opposing the efforts of Americans to just really claim their fair rights, that um, everyone in the country and around the world would see that this had to come to an end. Mm -hmm. And maybe most visibly, although certainly not alone, this occurred uh, in uh, Montgomery, or Birmingham, Alabama, 1963, um, when he participated in the various demonstrations, nonviolent demonstrations, which were met by very violent tactics mm -hmm. by the police of Birmingham, Alabama. And um, this is, uh, well, this was a no one of a number of moments 
throughout the history of the civil rights movement that demonstrated um, how bankrupt, morally bankrupt, the segregation regime was, which mm -hmm. was nicknamed Jim Crow. Um, and he continued to use those ta tactics. Uh, and again, it was not only the right thing to do, but it was also um, as it was inspired, inspired leadership on his part as well as the part of Mahatma Gandhi. Mm. Uh, now he was now he was put into jail for even some of these peaceful demonstrations, right? Yep. I mean, he, he was in prison. He's written letters from I read some of those letters from being in Birmingham jail, written letters to his church and to his family and stuff like that. Yep, it's uh, one of his most famous writings, and it is um, um, as well almost as famous as his speech in August of 1963. I have a dream speech, although that arguably may be his most famous speech. Uh, that may be the speech that, uh, if, if someone can identify one speech that he gave, that's it. But it's one of hundreds, thousands, maybe. Sure, sure. But, that, but I mean, so many of us have actually watched the speech or at least read that speech or heard it said. Um, like 17 minutes, I think, is the, the whole speech is like 17 minutes long, but that 17 minutes literally changed the country. Yep. Um, because of how it resonated with everyone. And that was the great thing about Martin Luther King Jr., maybe you can talk to this, is, is that he wasn't just about wanting um, you know, African Americans or the black population to be considered equal. He wanted everyone to be considered equal. Religion, uh, race, uh, sex, uh, it didn't really matter. He was real equality for everyone. Certainly. Um, I think that uh, that's how he saw the whole thing, and he really is the inspiration for so many of the movements that have followed in its wake um, or were occurring at the same time. Uh, because, uh, again, at the same time, 1960, we have the election of the first president who was a Roman Catholic. Right. Which, uh, for us, that's ancient history, but... That's huge at the time. Yep. Yeah. And a hundred years ago, there was a great deal of antipathy that Roman Catholics had to deal with and a great deal of alienation between Protestants and Roman Catholics. Not all, but um, again, for us, uh, fortunately, that's ancient history and most people aren't familiar with that. But yeah, he was one of the inspirations for many of these movements hmm. that are with us today. Uh, not only religion, but also uh, people who may need accommodations for one reason or another. Um, all of this has come from this movement, and he operated within the context of a civil rights movement that emerged after World War II. Okay. And this was, uh, there was about a 25-year period, actually you could say 21-year period, when a great deal was accomplished from 1947 to 1968. 1947, you have Jackie Robinson signing on with the Brooklyn Dodgers. 1948, Harry Truman ordering the desegregation of the military. Um, 1954, Brown versus Board of Education, the civil rights uh, case decision that uh, issued by the Supreme Court that ended uh, racial discrimination or racial segregation in public schools. Um, 1964, the Civil Rights Act. 1965, the Voting Rights Act. 1968, the Housing Act. All of this coming together. Mm. And in fact, one of the people who sponsored the legislation to uh, make, make Dr. King's uh, birthday a holiday was uh, Senator Edward Brooke from Massachusetts. And he was the first African American elected to the U.S. Senate mm. since the late 19th century. There had been no senators elected since then. And it's actually part of a larger context, a series of efforts going all the way back to the colonial period that starts with the movement to abolish slavery. Right. And the overwhelming majority of participants in that movement were African Americans. Um, so Dr. King continues a line of efforts that go back to the colonial period. It's kind of interesting that, that Martin Luther King Jr. kind of is risen to the, the figurehead of the civil rights movement that happened in the 60s, but this, this had been going on for years and years and years and really caught new wind after World War II and he didn't really hit until the late 50s um, with what he was doing, even though he was the figurehead, there were so many other things that happened before he came onto the scene. Well, then, then he was assassinated, of course, we know, in, in uh, was it 1968 or 69? April 4th, 1968. Yeah. And so, uh, so then uh, after that, 
he's memorialized in a national holiday. When, when did that take place? Well, the movement and started uh, shortly after his assassination. Actually, just uh, <laughs> believe uh, within weeks of his assassination, John Conyers, who was a member of the House of Representatives from Michigan, he started the um, movement to have his birthday made into a holiday. And it took about 10 years before the House of Representatives voted on it in 1979. Now, there had been progress in some states. Illinois had made uh, uh, Dr. King's birthday a state holiday in 1973. But um, the first vote in Congress wasn't until 1979. And then with a series of civil rights marches in 1982 and 1983, Congress passed the bill in 1983 that would make third Monday in each January, the day that we observe uh, Dr. King's birthday. And uh, President Reagan signed it. Um, 1986 was the first day that it went into effect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 1986? Mm -hmm. Wow, okay. All right. Now, you, you have said that, that MLK Day has uh, some importance for what you do. Yeah, I am serving as an AmeriCorps VISTA. So AmeriCorps is kind of like domestic Peace Corps. You do a year of service with an organization. A lot of times that's a nonprofit like CASA that I work for, mm -hmm. Habitat, that can be at Lee University. They have a few vistas there. And they encourage us to do, um, to see Martin Luther King Day as a day of service and to reach out and do something. And that, I mean, would you say volunteerism ties in well with his mission? Oh, like very much message? so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very much so, because in a large part, that's what he was about. Mm -hmm. Now, um, nominally, his occupation was as a minister, but he spent most of his time in these efforts. Yeah. Uh, and President Obama, um, one of his daughters and his wife are actually, partic actually participated yesterday in a day of service okay. as part of the observance of the holiday That's yesterday. Awesome. Yeah. And I know a lot of, a lot of uh, colleges and universities um, will recognize the day and actually have days of service. I know Lee does that, mm -hmm. don't, don't they? Um, and, uh, and a lot of other colleges will do that. And they just take MLK Day and everybody just goes out and, and, and volunteers and helps yeah. people do whatever they need to do. And, um, and I, I actually kind of think that's a great way to remember him and what he did and what we're all about. That exactly. it's, not, it's not just about race. It's, it's really about helping, helping each other. Yeah. It's very much community. And that's something I was going to ask you. Do you see... How does his mission kind of live on today, other uh, than just the volunteerism and everything? But how does that continue what he did? Well, continue what he had said in, in his speech mm -hmm. about measuring people on the basis of who they are, as opposed to superficial characteristics, because that's what he was all about. Mm -hmm. In fact, when he was in Memphis in 1968, in April of 1968, he was there as part of uh, his involvement with um, the strike that was being carried out by um, sanitation workers there and this was part of a larger effort that he was uh, part of and I think this was at the heart of what he was doing was um, a program to help people who were disadvantaged I mean everybody across all lines mm -hmm. it was just to prov provide them with the opportunities and that's what the volunteerism is about and that's ultimately what uh, he was about and I think he would be much more comfortable with this being a day of, or yesterday being a day of service than marking his his birthday, his birthday yeah yeah. Well, that, you know, that is fantastic, fascinating mm -hmm. and fantastic. It's, it's nice to know that, that, uh, that he has, he, his impact has actually changed the country in such a positive way. Do Dr. Greenwood, thank you so much for being here and for giving us this, uh, this insight. Really appreciate it. We got to have you come on again when we get, you know, Veterans Day and Fourth of July and That's everything cool. else. We'll have you come back. Um, that's, uh, that's great. So, uh, what we'll do is we'll take another break. We'll come back. We got, uh, some things that matter, you know, because all of this is just preliminary and the things that matter <laughs> are coming up and, uh, and then, uh, we'll, so we'll be right back right after this. How would you like to look and feel better? If so, then visit the Ford Center for Anti-Aging, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Dr. Ford has been serving Cleveland and the surrounding area since 1984. He is a licensed physician with the Board of Anti-Aging Medicine, offering affordable Botox injections. Botox is a medication that is used to treat dynamic wrinkles such as crow's feet, forehead lines, and frown lines. In addition to Botox therapy, rejuvenate and smooth wrinkled skin 
The micro laser peel treats skin conditions associated with aging and active lifestyles. If you're looking for safe and affordable anti-aging treatment, call the Ford Center for Anti-Aging at 423-614-0535, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. I'm Byron Winters with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. Contact me for all of your business insurance needs. From general liability to workers' comp, commercial auto, and business umbrellas, Landmark Insurance has you covered. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland, is your number one Dodge Chrysler and Jeep dealer in this area. Stop by and see the brand new 2011 Chrysler 200. The 200 is essentially a new nameplate with a significant facelift to the outgoing 2010 Chrysler Sebring. A beautiful vehicle at an unbeatable price. And while you're there, check out the all-new Jeep Grand Cherokee and the newly designed Dodge Durango. Redesigned, revamped, and reinvigorated. Yes, the Dodge Dodge Durango is back, bigger and better than ever. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep offers a complete parts and service department with qualified service technicians to fix and repair your vehicle. So for your next brand new or pre-owned vehicle, make it Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland. I'm Dr. James Markham, host of the television program Heart of Health, seen right here on WTNB Television. Thursday at 7 o'clock, Friday at 8 a.m. or Sunday at 3.30 p.m. So it's a little weird that uh, Ryerson's not here because usually he'll talk about and then he'll throw to me for the things that matter. Uh, but uh, what I'm just going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to go throw to myself. I was going to say, yeah. Literally. So uh, Matt... Here we go. <laughs> My name is Matt, and these are the things that matter. This is a very interesting one, Sarah. A group of Amish men were sent to jail in western Kentucky Thursday for refusing to pay fines for breaking a state highway law that requires their horse-drawn buggies to be marked with orange reflective triangles. I've seen those triangles before, yeah. That's crazy. The men have a religious objection to bright orange signs. <laughs> they say they're too flashy and conflict with their pledge to live low-key religious lives. I mean, you have to leave it, you have to give it to them for being dedicated to their faith. I guess, but them. I'm telling you, the Amish people are causing so many problems. <laughs> And our society, people. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. I say, don't let them put the orange triangles on there. And if they get hit with cars, if cars just come up and hit them, so be it. That is horrible. They should not be on the roads anyway. Yeah, get your buggies off the I road. think the Amish are a menace to our society. A menace. <laughs> I do. I'm sorry, yes, those hateful, mean Amish people. I'll, although I will say, come on now, I mean, putting them in jail just because they won't put orange trunks. That's crazy. That's a little ridiculous. I, and I think the Kentucky people are just, they're just, uh, listen, well, I'm, I'm, I'm arguing both sides it's now. It's Kentucky, though. I'm arguing both sides. You are. You I know, they're, they're prejudiced, the they're biased, they're be prejudiced the against the Amish. Yes, that, that needs to be stopped. Which I happen to be. And Nordic, apparently. I'm a, I'm a Nordic who is You're a Viking who Amish. is biased against the Amish. And though I have a mustache. That's true. You have, Not a very yeah. good one, but it's there. Have you heard about this? Starbucks launched its new mellower blonde roast Ooh. this week. Some people are not happy with the dark roast. That Starbucks typically has in their their coffee, so they're 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 releasing uh, releasing a mellow flavored blonde roast, but they don't want to hear any of their baristas joking about the name. They were told at a regional rally that there are absolutely no blonde jokes to be told around the coffee whatsoever. It will be a written offense if so, with threat of losing their job. Are they afraid the coffee's going to get their feelings hurt? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> the coffee has feelings. You know, blondes generally are sensitive, so. They, you they think are. after years of taking bashing, they'd get over it. Well, but. they're they're only sensitive with those jokes that they really, truly understand, which are very few. Blondes don't really get most of the jokes told about them. Isn't that true? Your producer is hating me right now. 
Uh, Jennifer James <laughs> happens to have blonde hair. But now I will tell you, I have... Well, it it's, looks blonde. What there is of I it. I have a blonde There's beard. Some, yeah. I have a blonde I beard. I would say that qualifies as blonde. Um, but I, I thought, what a great time to tell some blonde jokes. You should. Embrace it. Yeah. Like, how do you get a one-armed blonde out of the tree? I don't know how. Wave. Oh, goodness. <laughs> just Poor blonde. The, um, there, there are some of those she was so blonde jokes. She was so blonde... She got stabbed in a shootout. She was so blonde, she told me to meet her at the corner of walk and don't walk. Oh, no. Think about that one a second. <laughs> she was so blonde, if she spoke her mind, she'd probably be speechless. You got any blonde I jokes? I haven't heard any of this. I just have, I mean, the classic, how do you drown a blonde? How, how do you drown a blonde? Put a scratch and sniff sticker in the bottom of the pool. <laughs> Everyone's heard that, except Matt, apparently, but... I love that one. That's you think a good I know one. more since I'm brunette, but I don't. I know, right? You're yeah. a brunette. You should know all the blonde I should. jokes. Mm -hmm. I got one more for you. What two, is it? Two, two blondes. Okay. Wrapped the car. They locked their keys in the car. And after hours and hours of trying to um, try to get their keys, open the guard door to get their keys out, one blonde says to the other, man, we got to hurry up. It's starting to rain and the top's down. Oh, no. <laughs> There for uh, now. I, now I usually uh, make fun of Canada because um, I really don't know where Canada is. It's like some other side of the world. That, you, you don't know. know how to get through an episode without offending Jennifer. Is but apparently, <laughs> I, I, this is all about offending Jennifer. Apparently. Jennifer, I am so sorry. You actually are the exception to the rule. You are a smart blonde. Who'd have thought? That's true. I, I don't know. Massachusetts team uh, teens have officially broken. The world record for toilet paper folding. Students from St. Mark's School in Southboro, Massachusetts, completed 13 folds, beating a previous high school student's record of 12 folds. What does this mean? This means when you take toilet paper and you fold it in half, it doubles in size. And then you fold it again, and you fold it again, and you fold it again, and you can't get many, many. Actually, if you take a, just a regular sheet of paper, you can't fold it more than eight times. This also means this is what's wrong with our education system, that they're <laughs> sitting folding toilet paper. No, no, they're ingenious. They found a way to do That's 13 true. folds. That it is impressive. turns out, however, that the 13 folds had 8,192 layers wow. of toilet paper. So would that be different depending on what brand you get? I like if it's ultra soft or the You don't want a double strong. roll. You don't yeah, want you to wouldn't a want a double roll. You want a sing yeah. single roll. Mm -hmm. um, and you probably want that really, really awful the rough, stuff. The ho like they have probably it, at Cleveland State. Not now. No, we use the nice <laughs> stuff at Cleveland State. Now, I was thinking of like, um, at like uh, mall bathrooms and stuff. Oh. You know, they get that really rough, thin stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I thought about actually grabbing some toilet paper and trying, trying to pull to it in it, here. Yeah. But we're setting a world record, hopefully this year, for how many hats we wear. So uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that. All right, I got one more for you. This is uh, this is astonishing to me. Police ticketed a six-year-old boy for reckless driving, driving without a license, and not having his vehicle registered after he drove his miniature mo motorcycle into an SUV. The boy's mother said police impounded the miniature gasoline-powered motorbike that her son got for Christmas after he crashed into an SUV on December 27th. He's six. I just don't even know what to say. He's it seems six. that he crashed it so quickly, too. I mean, he only had a couple days He's in the six. sun with it. Yeah. Why? It's one of those little, like, yeah, three-wheel... Mm -hmm. uh, now, it, it's apparently gasoline-powered, so it... It, it can go can a, little a little faster, key, yeah. but he's six, and it doesn't go like maybe 10 miles an hour. And he, he ran into an SUV, and he got ticketed for it, and they impounded his bike. That is so sad. I wonder how much they charge to get that out, because I know if you get a car impounded, it's a hefty sum. Well, it turns out that, uh, that the commissioner and the mayor got involved. And said this is crazy. And said it's crazy, and That's they good. got the bike back and the, and the whole thing. Although... Um, the bike is damaged, apparently. I'm sure it hit an SUV. Get, yeah. And the mom said she had to pay $127 at first, but they refunded her money and, and all of that. 
but the nerve of a police officer to actually your write a ticket boy, for sure. a six-year-old. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, I who know. who who's in charge there? It's the mom is in charge. Write the ticket to the mom. Yeah. I don't know. Where was he driving this? That this? I mean, did he just go out on the road and? I don't. I mean, maybe he just drove out on the street. It's a good thing he's not hurt. I don't know. I I have no idea. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. My name is Matt, and those are the things that matter. We have. Uh, we're just going to close up right after this commercial break. So uh, stick around. We'll be right back. Kathy Guy with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. Call us today for all your personal insurance needs. With 28 years in the insurance business, I have the solutions and pricing you are looking for. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland, is your number one Dodge Chrysler and Jeep dealer in this area. Stop by and see the brand new 2011 Chrysler 200. The 200 is essentially a new nameplate with a significant facelift to the outgoing 2010 Chrysler Sebring. A beautiful vehicle at an unbeatable price. And while you're there, check out the all new Jeep Grand Cherokee and the newly designed Dodge Durango. Redesigned, revamped, and reinvigorated. Yes, the Dodge. Dodge Durango is back, bigger and better than ever. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep offers a complete parts and service department with qualified service technicians to fix and repair your vehicle. So for your next brand new or pre-owned vehicle, make it Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland. I'm Dr. James Markham, host of the television program Heart of Health, seen right here on WTNB Television. Thursday at 7 o'clock, Friday at 8 a.m. or Sunday at 3.30 p.m. How would you like to look and feel better? If so, then visit the Ford Center for Anti-Aging, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Dr. Ford has been serving Cleveland and the surrounding area since 1984. He is a licensed physician with the Board of Anti-Aging Medicine, offering affordable Botox injections. Botox is a medication that is used to treat dynamic wrinkles such as crow's feet, forehead lines, and frown lines. In addition to Botox therapy, rejuvenate and smooth wrinkled skin. The micro laser peel treats skin conditions associated with aging and active lifestyles. If you're looking for safe and affordable anti-aging treatment, call the Ford Center for Anti-Aging at 423-614-0535, located at 2020 Key Street, Northwest. Good morning. It's a really rainy, warm morning. It's uh, not as chilly as I personally would like it. But uh, it's, uh, it's rainy. Uh, the high today is going to be 61 degrees, lows 31. Uh, that was probably this morning, um, but it's warmed up pretty quick. Mm -hmm. uh, Tomorrow is going to be back down into the 40s, which I'm excited about. 43 degrees, low 23. And then on Thursday, 43 degrees with a low of 23 again. Start it's still feeling a little bit more like uh, that winter weather that we hope to see. That you but hope to see. That, that I yeah. hope to see. Well, I do as well. Yeah, we, right. yeah the collective we. Right. The, appreciate the collective we uh, here at Tennessee Valley <laughs> Maybe this not morning the collective you. on Tuesdays. Yes. Hope to see. I don't know about Joe Palo. He's he kind of he's from Florida. He likes the warm weather. That's what I've heard. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so uh, I, I actually would like to see some snow. I would love some snow. We had that, you know, the spitting snow the other day, but that wasn't spitting. Spitting. How, how, that's kind of a disgusting way to describe <laughs> snow sorry. coming down. I'm gonna just spit snow at you. God's <laughs> like spitting snow yes. down on us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I would like to see some snow. Now, last year we had some big, big snow. Oh, uh, this time of year, yeah, it was. Well, it was the beginning of January. And I'm sure a lot of my students would prefer to yeah. see some. I know some Lee snow. was out for a couple days. Yeah, and last I think, year we I'm were out for a few days as well. So, um, well, we, uh, what, do we have some upcoming events? You have an upcoming event with CASA, yes, don't you? Yes, I do. Um, we have CASA, which, again, I know some of you out there have heard me before prattle on about it, but um, <laughs> it's Court Appointed Special Advocates, and we are a child advocacy nonprofit. We work in court 
for abused and neglected, neglected, neglected ne children. Neglected, neglected children. Neglected children. <laughs> and um, just make sure they have safe homes. We're on we, TV. You're supposed to pronounce words the way they're written. <laughs> I just, Which oh, makes no sense. I'm it's totally English. Sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Like our language makes any sense to begin with. But yes, we have a Red Shoe Gala coming up February 11th. It's Is it a gala or a gala? I've heard both. I go with gala because that's how our cater pronounces it. So right, I guess. Well, gala's fine. Red but shoe gala, gala is, I prefer gala. It sounds less awkward. I don't know. It's just more, more yes, distinguished. Yes, gala. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yes, we, <laughs> this event we have is coming up two days before Valentine's Day. So come to it and bring your sweetheart. Um, and we will be having a silent auction. There'll be dinner live music and then a dj as well dancing dancing we said that last yes. time yes and i did promise last time if you come without a date and need a dance i will dance there we go I love some dancing so, there we go yeah. now th there's a, there's a donation uh yes the ticket event. price um just so the point of it is to raise money and awareness for casa sure, of course so we can help more children in the bradley county area and so the ticket price, it's $35 for an individual or 60 for a couple. Oh, so you're so you getting a discount. A mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also, I don't know if I mentioned this last time or not, but teachers and students get a discount in addition to that. So it's only really? $25 for a teacher or student. So now I'm a teacher. Yes, so you would get to come in at a $25 rate. Mm -hmm. That's making it a lot more attractive for me to come. Yes, that kind of... Yeah, makes it a little more affordable for yeah. people out there. But because we well, do want to thank. If I show teachers. up, save a dance for me. I will do that certainly. <laughs> My wife won't win. <laughs> uh, that's great. That, that's that's really good. And Casa mm -hmm. does so much good for the kids in this community and and around this area. So we're really happy um, that you have that. Now, do you have a favorite person this week? My favorite person would have to be, um, to refer back to the game I went to yesterday, Coach Pat Summit. Pat Summit. Always terrifying. Um, she was it's glorious. Always terrifying. Always. She scares me. But I've, I mean, I've looked up to her since I was really young. Um, and I told you, I mentioned this to Matt, that I actually, I went to a book signing of hers once. And she wrote in my book, Keep on Practicing, because I played basketball at the time. But Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I don't anymore. But That's I, awesome. She is a great lady, she though. She is. She's I mean, a great she's coach. She's done so much. And she, regardless of... The fact that she is terrifying. She really, I mean. A few years back, I actually went to the United Way luncheon. Mm -hmm. You know, Matt, United Way and the whole thing. And she spoke for the United Way That's luncheon. So cool. And I, I didn't even ha get to meet her. I was just mm -hmm. sitting in the audience. And I was scared out there. It's understandable. She, she just her scares presence scares people. Is just, yeah. She is such a huge, wow. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, that's how come they win. That's, that's why they win. And that's why so many of uh, her girls go on to so much success. So. My favorite person of the week, you guessed it, Matt Ryerson. Aww. I, I, we gave him a lot of hard time on here, and he kind of does look like a giant leprechaun. But, uh, but Matt Ryerson, uh, he has been a friend of mine for, I can't remember how many years, and, uh, and he's great. And he's doing a lot of good work over the United Way uh, as the president there and, um, and really helping out a lot with the people uh, in this area and, and the agencies in the, this area, CASA and everybody else um, that he's involved with. So Matt, my favorite person this week, especially when you give up the big chair for me, I kind of like that. I kind of like that. I like so, sitting over here. So what are you going to do this week? You got any plans this week? Anything major cool going on this week? Put me on the spot with that one. Okay, I so honestly no, don't, don't, I don't you're think not so. going to do anything. No, I'm going to work. And get ready for this gala gala. There so. you go. You got to work yeah. on that. Uh, I, uh, How about you? I don't have... Um, well, Securing school, the see, fence for the dog would be... Uh, yeah, good, getting the fence start. taken care yeah. of would be nice. Uh, classes began last Thursday, but I only had a couple. So this week, classes are full board, and That's I got to get prepared Get in the for swing that. of that, yeah. And so I got to do that in Kiwanis. And so. Kiwanis. But you and I are going to be here next week. Yes, we are. Because Ryerson's out again next week, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, like I said already, the quality level rises yes. with your presence. Of course. So, uh, so we are uh, really excited to have you again. Thank you. Anyway, we uh, great to see you again. Um, hope you have a great week. And we will see you next week, same time, same channel, right here Tennessee Valley this morning. Thanks. Have a good day.